Hello, this is Nagoji here. Welcome to Top 37 plus 2. Yeah, um, this series also has Monarch Show and Singapore, so, eh. <laughs> but I'm going to do a Top 37 Godzilla film list, so I'm going to start with the Singapore and minus 1. Wait, that's out, so we can get those two out of the way. So, single point. Let me show the tier list. So, single point will automatically go on as I actually enjoyed the show <laughs> very much. I really enjoyed the show, so. Plus one. Plus actually, yeah, let's. And if you're guessing were the Monarch show, I automatically put that in D. It goes in D right there. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of that show. I wouldn't say it's the worst, but it's not good either. It's just not. Yeah. Single point, I love. I think it had interesting ideas. It did. Didn't. It's really interesting. I love the science behind it. I love the characters, even like May and what's the guy's name again? Um, Ben, not Ben. Um, Kamido, the main, the guy with the white hair, and all the and Go and all the characters in the show. Even though I can't remember them off the top of my head because it's been so long since I watched the show. But I do remember enjoying it. I think I watched it when it aired. So it was pretty good. I loved it. So with that out of the way, let's get to the, the good criminal criminal showing. The top 37. So at number 37, we have... Godzilla's Revenge. Where is Godzilla's Revenge? Oh, right here. Yeah. Let's just put you right there. At number 37. Yeah, number 37, Godzilla's Revenge. Piece of shit. Doesn't deserve to this. It's the worst dog shit ever. I hate this movie. I despise this movie. I despise it with a grain of salt. I hate it. It is the worst Godzilla movie ever made. I don't care if anybody liked this film. You can like this film all you want, but I'm sorry. Why do you like this film? Seriously. Why? Just why? Why does anybody in the right mind like this film? No. Just no. Get some help. Stop it. Get some help. Because this film is just terrible. It is the worst because of them out there. I'm sorry. I do not like this film. It's just bad. It's terrible. It's terrible. I hate this film. It's so bad. Is the worst film out there. I'm sorry. I don't like it. I think it's bad. I think it's not good. It's just terrible. It is the worst because of film out there for many reasons. I don't care. And I still don't get why people love this film. I just don't get it. Why do people love this film? Are we watching the same film I am right now? Like... Did you not see the film I just watched? Like, they gotta be watching something else because there is no way anybody can love this film. It's hated for good reasons. Yes, it's got good memes, but the memes don't help because it's bad. It's so bad. I'm sorry. I do not love this film at all. It's just terrible. It's bleh. Bitch piece of garbage it i hate it same thing can be said for number 36 because uh, uh, obviously door yeah very controversial um yeah i don't love this film i'm sorry i think it's one of the shit i know i know it has its fans i know people there's a lot of people who put this in the top 10 list i don't see why it's pretty boring and bland I don't think any of the characters are memorable. I just, like, I think the last time I watched this, I had trouble staying awake because of how boring it was. I legit fell asleep during this movie. I had to wake myself up just to pay attention. 
I'm sorry. It's not good. I, I'm not a big fan of this. It's just terrible. You know what is... I, uh, I have a love and hate relationship with Fedora. Unlike with Gabba, with Gabba just being a big bully, and that movie just being nothing with stock footage and Guns of Revenge, this movie is has original footage. Too bad it's weird as hell. Like a lot of weird shit happens. It like I know this is supposed to be a environmental movie, but I feel like this movie will be a better message to people on drugs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I do not love this film. This film is just terrible. It is... Ugh. Because of the door is not good. The only thing I love about this movie is because of the flying. That's about it. That's something you don't see every day. And like the DVD says, well, that's something you don't see every day. Yeah, I agree. And it's just worth the price of admission. I think... I love it. I love that film. I well, I don't love it. I just love that scene. That scene is worth price of admission. Do not only do it once, but twice. And it is funny as hell. It is. Yeah, I love it. I love that. I love that scene. But besides that scene, I hate this film. It's not very really good. It's hated. I think it's probably the worst. One of the worst because of films, second to the bottom. And with that said, at number 35, we have Those Other City Energy Battle. I know, me hating on the anime trilogy. How original. Yeah, this film's boring. Boring as hell. I think the only characters I love in this show is probably Memphis and the Chobijin. Yeah. Even though this show, even though this not show, even though this anime is pretty garbage, and then, and you know, and why did the posters tease like Godzilla was gonna fight Godzilla? Like why did it do that? And they tease it all in the advertisement that Godzilla was gonna fight Godzilla, but it turns out Godzilla does fight Godzilla, but he's a city. How original! Have your most have your top five kaiju's turned into a city? Who in the right mind would turn Mechagodzilla into a city? I swear to God, I will come and find you. And I will hunt you down for doing that. Just why? Why would you turn Mechagodzilla into a fucking city? That makes no goddamn sense. Ugh. Well, with that said, let's move on to... Let's move on to number 34, I believe. 37, 35. Yeah, number 34. Number 34 at the bottom. At the very bottom. Uh, uh, this is really contemplate. Oh, I know. Godzilla and Martha, Battle for Earth. Yep. My opinion, the only dud in the Heisei era. Yeah, this is the only done in the Heisei era. I just find it really bad. I'm sorry. The only thing that saved this movie is Batra, but if Batra wasn't in it, this movie would be pretty boring. Because I love Batra's design, even though it's just an alternative version of Marfa. An alternative version of Marfa. Uh, but besides that, Godzilla just feels like a cameo in his own movie. And this wasn't originally supposed to be a Godzilla vs. Mafia film. It's supposed to be a Mafia vs. Baggin film. So, oof. Oof. actually, I think it was supposed to be a Mafia vs. Gigamoth for as many people's ideas for this film. But this film, I'm afraid it just feels like an Indiana Jones film. You got the Indiana Jones plot lines, like. Guy goes find an egg on the island. They even rip off the Temple of Doom scene of them falling in the river. <laughs> they legit rip off Temple of Doom. So, yeah. And 
the Sobijin Enders aren't really memorable at all. Not at all. And Mafa just looks like a pushy, even though I am I do kind of like the Mafa design. It's kind of going on me, but I think this might be also the strongest Mafa out there because this is the only Imago Mafa that doesn't get killed by Godzilla. So, eh. But, but, but that was only because Batra helped her. But, eh. And Godzilla himself uh, doesn't really do much besides come out of a volcano again. Come out of Mount Fuji, which doesn't really affect the plot, even though Mount Fuji is up thing. They honestly seem not to care about that. They just move on from that. Okay, my food is up then. But you gonna do something about that? Uh, uh, yeah, there's a lot of pop points that don't make no sense. And I think this movie, and I don't understand how this movie is the highest grossing Heisei film. I just don't understand why this one is the highest grossing Heisei film. It makes no sense to me. But eh, whatever. But with that said, at number Nets, I have to give the honors to Ever Horror of the Deep. Yep, this film is also boring as hell. I don't remember any characters. Actually, there's way too many characters in this film. Too many characters on this in this freaking film that I don't care to remember. Like, most of these characters are pretty forgettable. Like, a lot of them are pretty forgettable. I think the only characters I do like is the Vapor and Dial. 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 I hope I pronounce that right. Her character. But besides those two, there really aren't that many memorable characters. There's even, there's even the same guy who played... Even the same guy who played uh, Dr. Serzov returns, his character returns, but he's just a different character, which makes no sense. And most of these characters are incredible. And Ebba, Godzilla, and Martha as a cameo. And what a great enemy. Ebba, a fucking mobster slash shrimp hybrid. I don't know what kind of position it is. Is it, a lob- is it a shrimp or a lobster? What are you trying to do here? You look like a lobster or shrimp. And that means really, really Japanese word for shrimp, but he looks like a freaking lobster, so that's a bit confusing. Ebba is just pretty weak and pathetic villain of a monster. I think that movie is pretty boring. I'm not a big fan of Ebba. I'm just not. I think it's bad. I think it's ugh. I think it's terrible. I think it's the worst film out there. I hate it. I just despise it. It's just bad. It's just terrible. But with that said, moving on to that's on 1998. Hey, look at that. I didn't put it in the bottom five, but so enough. And number three, seven, three, five, three, four, three, three. At number thirty-two, because it's nineteen ninety-eight. Yeah, this is a terrible attempt at American, an American Godzilla movie. Just a terrible attempt. I'm sorry. I don't love this movie. I just hate it. It's the worst. Godzilla film out there, it's pretty bad. It's I despise it. It's the absolute bottom of the barrel. It's the worst cause of film I've ever made. Well, I mean not the worst. Well, it is in the bottom sets, but it's the worst kaiju film out there. I just it's the worst cause of it. This respects the Godzilla name. It's a Godzilla name only, known as Gina or Zola. If even as a kaiju film, it's still not good. I'm sorry. It would have been faithful if it was a Beast from Twenty Thousand Phantoms remake, but it's not. It's Godzilla, 
and it doesn't redeem the character. And there's legit only two characters, one the news, Hank Azario's character and the French guy's character. Those are the only two characters I love in this film. But besides them, a lot of them are not memorable at all. A lot of them are not memorable. A lot of them I really don't care about. I honestly don't give two funny claps about. They're all terrible. I think they're bad. Not good ones, whatever. I honestly don't care. Uh, so, like Matthew Broderick's character, Nick Topless. Do they make his name a running gag? Yeah, that's no joke. They make his name a running gag. In 1988, he runs away in Godzilla himself. He runs away from the military. He doesn't move fire, which sort of does. He has a family breath, which sort of nights and beats fire. They count, I guess. But besides, this movie's just terrible. I hate it. It's just bad. I'm sorry. No. It's just not for me. And I understand it, in recent years, it's gone falling. It's grown to falling because people are starting to appreciate this movie. I'm just not one of them. I'm still one of those people who hate this movie. And it's not because I'm one of those people who say, Oh, I just hate this movie because I felt it was a disgrace. No, I hate it because it's not a good movie. I'm sorry. I just don't like it. It's just bad. I'm sorry. No. Not much can be said for... um, What did I put here? Is Son of Godzilla. Yep, Son of Godzilla. Yep, the Son of Godzilla. The Son of Godzilla. Yep. What can be said about this film that hasn't... This is definitely the turning point in the Godzilla fan If you thought Godzilla was a the turning point, uh, I guess I'd be mistaken. This is the turning point. When Melina was introduced, that's when the fan size went to shit. If you thought ever it was a turning point, you were going to be wrong because we get introduced to Minya, the worst and most hated character in the Godzilla fan base. Nobody likes him. Kumanga, I will give props at the but the Kumanga and Kamakira's pops do look oppressive for the time, and it's just not a sound of man in rubber suit. They do look impressive, but they're basically just bugs, so it doesn't really matter. Plus, they get their butts kicked by Godzilla pretty easily. Heck, one of them doesn't even get killed by Godzilla. Gets killed by a freaking spider. And Kimanga does get killed. Well, let's put up more of a fight. But, and the characters, there's way too many of them to remember. I don't remember a single one of them. I don't remember a single one of these characters because there's way too many characters to remember. I think the only one that I like is Akira Takawada's character. And I honestly don't remember most of them. They're pretty much forgettable. I don't remember most of them. <laughs> most of them are pretty much forgettable because most of them don't really have much of a personality. Woman character, that guy, you guy. Whatever your name is, I don't remember most of them because most of them are pretty much forgettable because there's way too many characters. And just like the last movie, it's taking place on an island that no one knows where it is, it has monsters on it. Also, one thing I do like is kind of, I know technically it's not canon that this is Monster Island, but in my eyes, it's Monster Island. I, I even thought that as a kid, like in my eyes, this was this was this island became Monster Island. That's what I thought as a kid. And I'm probably not the only one. I know, like, Ads Haunted thought it. And many kids like me thought it was Monster Island. So, mm. but I'm not a big fan of this film. It's just not interesting for me. It's just not my cup of tea. Not my cup of tea. But with that said, those are my bottom seven. 
Uh, moving on to D. 25 to 30, plus one. And Mono Elk Show probably means above these um, sets right here. It's above these sets right here, I think. And coming at the bottom is... Uh... Oof, I'm going to get a lot of hate for these ones. Uh, Godzilla vs. Megalon. Okay, don't get me wrong. I do love Jajago. I think he's pretty cool. Jajago is the only thing that I love this movie. But if Jajago wasn't in this movie, I would not love it. I hate Megalon. Gigan, I do love. Godzilla, do love. The kaiju fights are amazing. It's not the kaijus that is the problem. It's the constant use of stock footage. And the freaking main characters who are not really memorable besides Dr. Go and maybe the villains, but a lot of them were pretty forgettable. None of them are worth remembering. None of them are worth remembering. Except for the guy who says, Megalon! Awake! Megalon! I got that is some good meme stuff. But a lot of them are pretty forgettable and I don't care that much to remember. But the final battle is worth remembering because it is a pretty interesting final battle. Despite the footage, despite using one stock footage from Godzilla vs. Kai again. But besides that, I think it's a good final battle. But besides the fights and the kaiju that and Megalon's destruction scene at the dam, a lot of it's just stock footage from the previous movie, from previous movies. A lot of it's not worth remembering. It's not interesting whatsoever. And none of it, I honestly don't care to remember because it's really good. I do love Jet Jaguar, though. Don't get me wrong. I love Jet Jaguar. He's my favorite. I do love Jet Jaguar. He is the coolest thing in this movie. Jet Jaguar saves the movie alone. So is Guy and Godzilla. Meglon, not the biggest fan of. I do think that his design in the new short that came out this year is a lot better. But Megalon himself in this film, don't love. He's he, he's not very good. He did get an upgrade in this the short that came out this year, but I don't really love him this year in this film. But no 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 I love him in this short that came out this year. I just don't love him in his original film. He does not look that memorable. Well, with that said, moving on to number 29. Uh, this is hard. Because uh, I was... Uh, I hate for that. Okay, I'm a Gigan fan. Yeah, I'm not going to put you now. Godzilla vs. Gaigan, yeah. Godzilla vs. Gaigan. Where do I begin with this film? Um, not the biggest fan of this film. I, I think it just has the problem to do with not that many memorable casts, except for the main chick. The chick, you know, is Kwati. I don't understand why we didn't follow her story. Why wasn't she the main character instead of this guy who's not really, who's just pathetic and doesn't really feel like a main character? Most of the other characters I honestly couldn't care about. The city destruction scenes are, the scenes with Gigan are pretty badass. I love Gigan as a design. He is such a pretty cool design, and he's my favorite kaiju. I wouldn't have two SS mantras of him if I didn't like him. I love Gaigan. He's one of my favorite kaijus. Gaigan alone saved this movie. I love Gaigan. He is the most brutal, and he's also the first kaiju to make Godzilla bleed. He is one of the first kaijus to make Godzilla bleed. He earns that title. I don't care what people say. He did not make him bleed. He only scratched it. Guy got made Godzilla bleed. He made him gush out blood from his shoulder, from his head. He is a brutal kaiju. Guy got made him bleed. He 
Hidor only scratched God's law. Made him made him scratch. Only scratched him. Guy again is the first guy you made him actually gush out blood. And I remember when I saw that, I was like, wow, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, that was I love that film. It's perfect. Well, I don't I wouldn't say this film's bad. It's just meh. It's not really it's mediocre. It's not really worth remembering. But eh. Well, with that said, next one is oh boy, these nuts two I'm gonna get a lot of hate for. A lot of a lot of hate. Ah oh, boy. Oof. Oof. Monster Zero Invasion of the Astro Monster. So Monster Zero, because of it's Monster Zero. I call it Monster Zero because that's the short title. Monster Zero. Yep. <laughs> I've lost you. <laughs> I've lost everybody here. Uh don't love this film. Hate it. Absolutely hate it. I find it boring. Not really memorable. Okay, don't get me wrong. The action scenes with the kaijus are pretty good. And I do think Nick Adams' character is pretty interesting. And I think the romance that he has with the alien chick is pretty interesting. But besides them, most of the characters are pretty bland and forgettable. Besides, besides Fuji, I do love... I do love Nick Adams and Fuji's dynamic of how they're basically buddy cop thing. <laughs> I do love that dynamic. And most of the other characters I can't honestly couldn't care that much about. Except for the Zillions. The Zillions are worth remembering me. But besides them, most of them are pretty forgettable. Like not really worth mentioning. And this is the first kaiju movie with alien plot lines. And I don't think it was at all. I don't think it I'm not a big fan of these aliens. Yeah. I think Vader, I think in the Mechazilla films, it was done way better. The alien part lines was done way, way better. Like those alien dudes were way, way better than these guys. But I don't know. These aliens from this film are not really memorable. As they were in Final Wars, but me. Yeah. With that said, moving on to oh boy, this is where it gets tough. Um, oh boy, uh, this is where it gets really tough. I gotta choose wisely here. Ooh. Wow, uh, this is really tough. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, show them monsters. Yeah, the Shrine Monsters. All right. If this was the final Godzilla film, I think it would be a, pretty much a downer. I do love the Keylock. These are better aliens, but most of the characters are pretty boring. A lot of them are not more bearable. Even though I think you can probably just skip to the monster fights and get this movie done in like 45 minutes. Like You can just skip to the monster action on the the monster city destruction scene with in Tokyo and skip to the final battle. And you'd be done with this movie in like 45 minutes. Get some city destruction scenes and you'd be done with this movie in like 45 minutes. Not much. The characters are pretty much forgettable. Not really worth remembering. I can't remember a single one of the characters because they're pretty much forgettable. I think they're pretty bad. I don't love any of these characters. They're pretty unforgettable not worth remembering i don't 
I do love the do the thing that does save this movie from being a total letdown is the final battle with Godzilla Ghidorah versus everyone. That battle alone is epic as hell. I think that's honestly the best one of the best kaiju fights out there. It's epic as hell. Even though Ghidorah is groovy at match, he does put up a fight. He puts up a fight in the final battle. He gives every one of these kaiju a run for the money. And you can see why Ghidorah is a power threat not to be messed with. He puts up a fight. And he goes down like he doesn't die with, without losing. He goes out like a badass. Putting up a fight against all these kaiju. So I think that battle alone saves this movie, but... Without that battle, he yeah, had this movie be pretty forgettable. With that said, let me put that. Uh, oh boy. I'm going to get a lot of hate for this one. A lot, a lot of hate. Oh boy. Ugh. Oof. People don't hate me. Uh, Let's just put that right there. Yeah. <laughs> Before you grab the pitch, folks, let me explain. I've watched this movie so many times. But it comes to the viewers. I watched this movie like four times. And I come to the realization. This moves way too fast paced. A lot of stuff happens. You don't it doesn't give you time to get cat up. And even if you turn off your brain, too much stuff happens in this movie. The only character that I love in this movie is Jaya, but the rest of the cast I don't love. Even the returning cast members, Mark Russell and Madison Russell, completely wasted. Ren Sales out, completely wasted. Okay, the main villain guy, he's cool, but doesn't really do much. He only has a couple of lines. Most of these characters, except for Team Kong, except for characters who fall Kong, get lines. But they're not really worth remembering. I can only name like a handful of characters that I worth remembering. Like the main, I think, what's her name? Um, Elsa Gonzalez's character and Rebecca Hall. I do enjoy. And the main the guy who came up with the heave idea, who got introduced, and um, I was under Scar's character, and the main villain. I do enjoy, but besides them, most of them are pretty bad. Not even Bernie saves this movie. I'm sorry, Bernie does not save this movie. He's just annoying. I just find him annoying. It's cool that he's coming back in GSK, but I don't see why. Why can you bring Madison back? Why did Bernie have to come back? Why not the entire of the entirety of Team Godzilla? Why is it only Bernie's? Makes no sense. But okay. Besides that, I think this movie is pretty forgettable. Yeah. Not from worth remembering at all. And and I think the next film, I'm going to get a lot of hate for putting it so low in the list. What I think is the most overrated Godzilla film, in my opinion. I think it's the most overrated Godzilla film. <sighs> I'm going to get a lot of hate. A lot of fact for this uh, boy. Godzilla vs. King Adora at number 25. I'm sorry. Godzilla vs. King Adora, I don't love. I don't love this film. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's D plus material, but it's still bad. I'm sorry. I don't love this film. I think I. The more problem, I think it's only because I've seen the dub. I haven't seen the sub. If I was to see the sub, maybe my opinion would change, but I've only seen the dub because that's the only 
copy I got. I haven't seen the sub yet. I might I might go check in the internet archive to watch the sub, but uh, I don't think my opinion will change. It won't change that much. But I'm not a big fan of this movie. I'm sorry. The time and for people saying, "Oh, you just don't understand the time travel plot." No, the time travel plot is pretty easy. They create a timeline where Godzilla does this. Doesn't erase the past events from the previous movies. Makes a separate timeline. It makes a split timeline. Not that hard to remember. It doesn't erase Godzilla from history. It's pretty easy to get if you know your time travel plots. But the way they try to explain it, it's pretty dumb. They try to make you seem like you don't understand what's going on. But I'm not big on this film. I'm just not. I think the time they didn't need to add a time travel pause. They could just easily have King Adolf be from space again. But nope, they decided to add a time travel part, and I think it's a pretty bad one. I don't love this film at all. I think it's the most overrated Godzilla film, in my opinion. I gave it a bad review, my Heisei era review. I think I gave like a 4.9, and my opinion still sound with that. It's a 4.9. That's me. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I don't love this film. I think it's pretty bad. I think I feel like every movie with Ghidorah in it, after Ghidorah 3 had a monster, they didn't really do well with his character, except for reception of. GMK and GMK and Planet and yeah, I I do like New Noble Door. Don't judge. Actually, maybe not New Noble Door. GMK and the Monster Fest Scott Godora. Those are the only two exceptions that I do love that Godora. But besides that, I think. Most of them I don't love. He, most of them they completely don't. I don't love this version of King Adora. I'm sorry. Those okay. It's not entirely true. The fight scene with Godzilla versus King Adora. I don't mind the kaiju fights. It's the city destruction scenes that I don't like. Because in the first city destruction scene, they're just repeating a lot of the same shots from different angles. Don't lie to me and say, no, it's a new city. No, they're using a lot of the same sets from different angles. I know it's technically Tokyo, but come on. They're using a lot of the same sets from the previous movies. Just at different angles and different and a couple of different buildings here and there. They're just repeating a lot of the same shots. I think they even use some stuff for the show now. But I'm sorry, I don't love this film. And this is the first film to make Godzilla grow from 80 meters to 100 meters. And I don't think they. He does. He is pretty powerful and beats Ghidorah pretty easily. Until he goes into Mecha Ghidorah, which he still beats, even when he gets his Mecha form. Still beats Mecha Ghidorah in his Mecha form. If he didn't watch it in the movie, he beats him. Still wins. Yeah. But I don't love this film. It's pretty not my favorite. Uh, I think it's the most overrated Godzilla film, in my opinion. Pretty overrated. I'm not the biggest fan of this film. I don't love it at all. Yeah. I'm sorry. No. Just not. Not for me. But with that said, moving on to number 24. Um, this is when it starts to get tough. Because all these films from 16 to 24, I don't think they're bad. I just think they're pretty average. So let's start with these two. Because I do... I'm going to put these two together side by side because I do have the same opinion. The okay at best, pretty average. Okay. Planet of the Monsters, good stepping point. Planet Eater, disappointing finale, but still has interesting ideas. 
that doesn't settle off. Like the version aspect is pretty interesting. Planet Monsters starts off great. Planet either has interesting ideas, but doesn't. It's pretty weird, and it feels like a weird movie. I better. It feels like I'm on drugs when watching this movie. When I watch Planet either, and I love it because of how cool and weird this movie you like mind fight when you watch it i think i love this movie i love Mephi's character brings his character all full circle of another villain i wish she i wish she didn't make him the villain but eh. but i do love my and Mephis is pretty interesting i think he's pretty cool i think he's cool yeah well with that said what would i put at Number 22. Um, oh boy, this is when it gets really hard because there are a lot of guns of films that I do love. Uh. Wow. Um... Guess twenty fourteen. Cause I'm not the biggest fan of this film. Only at number twenty three. Yeah, I know. I've grown to have a love, and this film has gone down a lot, in my opinion. Okay, maybe not twenty fourteen. Maybe let me put you back down there. Because of yeah, twenty fourteen. Yeah, yeah, man, I'm contemplating. Yeah, um, because of a space Godzilla. Because I do love space Godzilla. He is a cool monster. He does say this movie, but the stuff without space Godzilla, like cutting back forth between the human characters, who aren't really most forgettable, and Mickey's character. Not as good as it was in the last film. But I do love Space Godzilla. I do think he's a cool kaiju. But Mogia doesn't need to be created. I think this easily could have had... He easily could have just made another mech... He could have just rebuilt Mechagodzilla and have Godzilla and Mechagodzilla fight Space Godzilla. They easily could... They easily could have just made Space Godzilla overpowered. They could easily have done that. I think that would have been a better movie, if I'm being honest. But they did not decide to do that, so... Yeah, at least they bought it back in Half Century War. But this movie, I think, is the third weakest in the Heisei era. But... I don't hate it. I love it. I actually do enjoy this film. I enjoy it more than Godot 3 and Monster and Invasion of the Ash and Godzilla vs. Actually, put, let me put 2014 here yeah, because I do love, because I do think 2014 is probably weaker than this film. Let me put that number 23 in the UN number 22 and. So that means again right here. And then Tokyo SOS. Right here. So Tokyo SOS, so let me rephrase that. 2014, I think it's pretty bland, boring. None of the human characters are worth remembering except for Brian Quasin's character who gets killed. And Cezar is the only character that I love. Most of them are pretty forgettable. Tokyo SOS. I love this movie, but I do think it's the weakest in the his in the Mara number twenty two. Wait, twenty four, twenty three, twenty two. And number twenty one. I mean, number twenty is Godzilla Reigns again. Yep, I put this in the top twenty. 
I love Godzilla Reigns again. I don't care what anybody says. I love it. I love this film. I'm sorry. I love it. I love this film to death. Sue me. I'll fight you, bro. Come at me. <laughs> Just kidding. I do love this film. I think it's pretty interesting. And then... Godzilla vs. Space Godzilla number 19. I do... Watch me. You put because of a Yeah, I do that some more stuff. Yeah, I think I'll put Space Cuzzle on number 19 because I do. And okay, maybe we'll go back to Cuzzle Reigns again. Cuzzle Reigns again. Uh, maybe we phrase that. 2014, pretty boring. Don't care about that much about it. Tokyo SOS. An okay ending to the Kyu saga. But a bit of a letdown from the previous movie. I still love this film. I don't think there's any bad Mechagodzilla film, in my opinion. I don't think it's bad. I just think it's pretty average. Because it means, again, also an average sequel. I don't think it's as bad as people say it is. I think it's far from the worst Godzilla film out there. I think it's far, far from the worst. There are many films that are worse than Godzilla means, again, in my opinion. Because of a space Godzilla. Space Cousin is cool. Human characters, not really memory, except for Yuki. Except for Yuki's character. He's the only interesting character in this movie. I think Yuki saves the film alone. Yeah. And then number 18, which I think is the most average because of the film, and a good film to get people introduced to to the Godzilla franchise. Godzilla vs. McEwers. I know people are going to hate me for that, but I'm sorry. I love this film. I love it. I love it. I just love this film. I absolutely adore this film. Love it. I love this film. I adore this film. I'm sorry. It is perfect. I mean perfect. Down to the last micro detail. I love this film. It's so good. I think I enjoyed this film so much. I watched, I think this is one of my most rewatched mime films out there. I do really enjoy it because of his bad years. I think it's an interesting film. I love this film. I think it's unique in its own way. And I think it's the most average because of the film, a good, probably the most average because of the film, in my opinion. And the final battle between Godzilla vs. Megiris is the most interesting battle out there. I think it's the most fun battle from how so it's the most cheesy battle, most cheesiest battle in the film. I think it's the best fight in the MoMo, in my opinion, because of how cheesy it is compared to the rest of the film, of how serious it takes itself. It's I think the way it takes itself as seriously is kind of funny of how serious it takes itself. It's kind of funny of how over top the plan is. I and I just burst out laughing. I think I love that part how serious it takes itself. But I do love this film. But with that said, at number twenty four, twenty three, twenty two, twenty one, twenty nine, and number seventeen, I put. I would put, um, oof, this is hard. This is really hard. Um, um, King Kong was, no, hmm. Uh, between these films, all these films right here are pretty solid films. But I'll probably have to choose um Ooh, these films are pretty hard to choose to put that number. So 
These films are pretty hard to choose from. Um, what would I put here? Um, probably, um... Ah, uh, this is gonna... Oh, man, this is hard. King Kong vs. Godzilla at number 17, and Ghidorah the Three-Headed Monster at number 16. King Kong vs. Godzilla. Oh, okay, let me rearrange it. Yeah. Maybe we can just put you right here. That's your name. But, but I think that's a good arrangement. King Kong vs. Godzilla. Cheesy as hell, but I love it for that. I think the final battle between Godzilla vs. Kong is probably one of the best fights because it does feel like an even match. And the characters are pretty cheesy in their own right. I do love the characters. It's so campy and cheesy. I and I come with a smile off my face. I love this. I think it's a good average Godzilla film out there. And just and if you show this to somebody, I think they'll say, what the? they'll probably be laughing off the floor. But there's a reason why this is the most highest, because it's the East versus the West. It's The Crash of the Titans, one of the best films out there, and I love it. I think it's probably one of the best Godzilla films out there. Show them mates and just have fun riffing off this movie. And then there's Godot the Three Headed Monster, which I think is a perfect introduction to Godot, even though the assassin plot line is pretty odd and crazy. How crazy it is. But with that said, I do love this film. I do love Godot and Three Headed Monster. I think it's perfect in his own life. But what can be said? And that's my C tier right there. Okay. And then coming at number 15 is oh, Godzilla 2. Mm. Godzilla 2000 and at number... And number 15, and let's put Teramekas are number 14. And number 13, Godzilla 2000, perfect way to start a new era of Godzilla, and I think it's way better than 1988. It's what Godzilla, what they should have done in the American Godzilla film. And I think the characters are pretty, pretty memorable, in my opinion. And I think it's a pretty good cast of characters. And I think it's pretty good in its own way. And I love this film. I think it's probably one of my most watched Heisei films. And I believe, not Heisei films, I mean, one of my most watched my films. And I think it's pretty good. Actually, let me move that up to number 11 right here. 
I hear? Move that up a little bit. And then put, um, oof, this is being tough. Uh, Because of us, is make us all right there. Nah, maybe put you back down there. Nah. Okay, Godzilla is Godzilla 2000 right here, and then Terra Mac Godzilla number 14. And then at number 13, yeah, number in Terra Mac Godzilla, I do think is the perfect way to end the franchise, to end the show era. I think it's the perfect ending, and I do think. This was the end of the show era. It would have ended on a high note. And if this was the final film, I do think it would end on a perfect note. Make it brings back the roots to 1954, and I think it's probably one of the best movies out there. And I do love the Mechas on this film. A solid 7.5 out of 10. And this 7 out of 10. And I do love this film. It's pretty interesting for what it does. And Titanosaurus, well, not memorable. He's still cool in his own right. Even though it's basically just an aquatic dinosaur. But, eh. And then you got... Godzilla vs. Godzilla. At number 13. Yeah, what can be said about this film? I, yeah, I love this film. I love Godzilla vs. Megazilla for its own way. And I do think Godzilla vs. Megazilla is the most campy, most cheesy, and you having fun just watching this film. I just love this film. Like, how can you not have a smile on your face after watching this film? It's so interesting and good. I just love this film. I adore it. I adore this film. I love it to death. And I think it's a pretty good film. And Moth for Godzilla is a perfect film to start to get introduced to Godzilla. It was my first Godzilla film. And it holds a very special place in my heart for being the very first Godzilla film I ever saw. From my parents have told me. It's my very first Godzilla film that I ever saw. I had the classic media DVD, the one that came in the five set with Godzilla King of the Monsters, Rodan, Godzilla's Revenge, Terror Met Godzilla, which was only an hour, which was a shorter version of Terror, the original ending, Terror Met Godzilla, and because of a small film. And I love this film. Absolutely adored it. And I think it's one of the best out there. I think it's interesting in what it does. I think it's one of the best Heisei films out there. And I think it's pretty cool. With that said, at number 11, I would put... Um, it's between Godzilla vs. Bailante and King of the Monsters. Uh, yeah. uh, I think it's... Sorry, this was in my top 10 in a previous list. But since a certain movie came out, this one right here... This one has moved down a little bit, in my opinion. I still love this movie, don't get me wrong. I love this film. But since this film right here came out, this movie has gone, is now out of the top 10. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry. Forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me, King of the Monsters. I love this film. I think it's the perfect American take on God's Law. And I know it has its haters. I know there are many people who do not love this film. I'm not one of them. I love this film to death. 
it's probably the best film to show to a non Godzilla fan. And believe it or not, the theater was packed when I first saw this film. And when I first saw it, people actually applauded to this movie. No joke, they applauded to the movie. They stand up and applaud, and I was one of those people. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's no joke. People applaud to this movie. So it's so with that said, I had a great theater session. Yeah, it didn't do well at the box office, but it kind of, it did make his money back. It did make its money back. It didn't make twice its money back, but eh. But considering it didn't do as well as Con Skull Island. Eh. I still think it's a seated, and I don't think it's a flop. It just didn't make as much as Kong Skull Island. I just, I still think it's a seated, and it's right. I do think it's a seated at the box office. I know Michael Doty has stated that it did not succeed at the box office, which was expected, but in my eyes, I do think this movie succeeded at the box office because it did make its money back at the box office. I think it made like 530 on a $130 million budget. But I do think it's a city at the box office, in my opinion. Yeah, don't judge me on that. With that said, at number... And at number 10, I would probably put... Well, we are in the top 10 now. Uh, number 10... Above single point, of course, is is Godzilla's Balante. Yep, Godzilla's Balante. I love this film. What cannot be said about this film? I endure this. I think this is one of my most rewatched Heisei films out there. It's so good and interesting. And I think it's probably one of the best out there. Probably one of the best Heisei films to watch. And a good. And I can't believe this is a fan script given to us by the fans. I'm glad this movie is this. It's a unique idea. Bio, it's bio wars. People are trying to struggle to get strong with bioengineering and the struggles that happens with bioengineering and create sponsors like Biolante, who is the most unique design, both rose form and the giant plant form. I do love Biolante. I think Biolante is an interesting design. And Godzilla. Perfect. I think this is one of his best designs. I think this is probably my third favorite Godzilla design, the Biogoji and Gido Goji suit. Even though, even though I'm not a big fan of Godzilla vs. King Ghidorah, I do love the Gido, the Gido, the Gido Goji suit and the Biogoji suit. Even though they're pretty, practically the same suit, I do love that design. I think it's a unique design, and it's probably his most iconic design. And this is what I think when it comes to Godzilla. It's most iconic design. And the city session scenes seen in this movie are pretty good. And but and the fights with Balante, though short, are interesting. Are interesting when they're on. And just look at the poppets on um, both Rose Form and Balante. They are so interesting. It takes like 17 people just to move the Balante final form. The big old crocodile form. It takes like 17 to 20 people just to move this thing. It takes a lot of people just to get this thing to move. Like, look at all those wires. Look at all the props. I think this is like the best suit that Toho has ever made. Like, Paul Lante is a beauty in herself. And look, I do think also she has a soul in her. And hopefully... Hopefully we get to see. I love this film. I think it's good. Uh, it's one of my favorites. Definitely in the top ten. Oh, next I will probably put um, Return of Godzilla at number nine. 
Yep, but turn a castle. And I'm an I. I love all these. I love all the Heisei films, especially these four right here. But the Turner Space Castle and I'm an I. Because I do think it's a unique and interesting take on. And, well, I do think it's the best way to struggle where Japan was during the Cold War, the right in the middle between US and Russia, and the tensions do go thick. And Godzilla is a perfect way, is a perfect monster, is reintroduced. And since a Japanese, a uh, Soviet sub, and they think the Americans in it, and Japan gets caught in the middle. And they have to tell, and they're afraid to be the word to Godzilla, word about Godzilla, because it might cause panic amongst the people, it might cause nuclear war. And it's a new, it is a unique take on the movie. And I do think it brought Godzilla back from life from his nine year. So I hate this. And I do think it's a legit good movie. I love this film. It's perfect. The characters are memorable. The story. This is easy. One of the darkest films in the franchise. Ever since the first one. Pretty dark of how dark it gets. It's pretty gruesome. It's pretty dark. It has this ominous feel of an apocalyptic movie. Like even the daytime scenes just seem dark. Like, this film is just so dark. It's a pretty dark film. I do love this film. It's pretty interesting. And at number... And at number... Eight, we got Godzilla vs. Mechazol. At number eight. Yeah, number eight. Because it was a Mechazo. Yeah, what not be said about this film that hasn't been always said. I love this film. I think it's perfect. It's perfect in all its rights. I love this film to death. I think it's the most perfect Godzilla film. I think it's the best, one of the best Mechazo films out there. Even though the only problem I have actually. I would probably put Godzilla against Mechazilla right behind that one at number eight. At number eight, Godzilla against Mechazilla, and then number seven, Godzilla vs. Mechazilla 2, because I do, it's most, I rank these because I do watch this one just a tight little bit more than this one. But my, I do, the only thing, the only problems I have with this movie, this one, I have problems with Godzilla. I not the biggest he does come off as a little bit weak in my opinion. But I do love Q. He is my favorite Mechazilla. I think Q is probably the best Mechazilla. And with this film, my problems are Mechazilla. It's just Mechazilla himself. He's not the design doesn't look that great. And I'm I don't I'm not a big fan of the design, even though it's probably my third favorite Mega Godzilla. Well, second favorite Mega Godzilla compared. Well, no, third favorite Mega Godzilla. I do I'm not the biggest fan of the design. It looks too doesn't look intimidating enough to be fighting against Godzilla. And compared to the poster, the poster looked a lot better. But I do love the story of this movie right here, Godzilla against Mechagodzilla. I, these movies, they can go back and forth of which one's my favorite, which one I like more. Sometimes it's Godzilla against Mechagodzilla, sometimes it's this one. This one's sometimes at number eight. These ones are pretty much tied. They switch back and forth. It depends on which day and what mood I'm in for these movies. Like Sometimes this movie can be a number seven 
and this movie can be at number eight. This movie can be at number seven. These movies switch back and forth in placement. I in my tier list. These both of these movies are pretty good. They're solid mechanisms of the films. The only reason why I put this one above this one, above Godzilla against Mega Godzilla, is because I've watched this film a lot more, and I used to bring this on road trips when I was little. Compared to this film, I think it's one of my most. Re- Actually, it's my most watched Heisei film out there. Legit, I watch it more than Godzilla vs. Destroyer. Even though I do love Godzilla vs. Destroyer, I do. Godzilla vs. Godzilla 2 is my most watched Heisei film. And with that said, what I put at number. What I put at number six is GMK. Yeah, I'm gonna get a lot of hate for that. Putting GMK at number six. Now this was in the top five in the previous list, but things have changed. And yep, opinions have changed. I do think GMK is probably the darkest film and has a lot of stuff about spirits. Godzilla himself is pretty gruesome in his, how he kills people. He literally stomps on people. This is easy. He has one of the best city destruction scenes in the movie. And he got not in the movie. And then he got the film. And Belgon himself is pretty unique. And it has his own. Belgon is probably the has a good design and uh, I love that scene with Big on the suit out there just saying ah, ah. that's so funny and cute and Ghidorah and Mafa Mafa has a unique design of being pretty intimidating and majestic at the same time and Ghidorah yeah not my favorite Ghidorah I think the honor goes to the monster vs Ghidorah being my favorite but he is still pretty cool. I don't mind the guard. I don't mind that he made him a good guy at all. Honestly, don't mind. It kind of fits this Skador. If you look at the design, it looks friendly. It looks good. It looks like he will save your soul. It looks like he will save the day. It looks like a friendly Ghidorah. And Godzilla himself, he's so cool. I think this is one of my top favorite top five favorite Godzilla designs. I think I love the design. It's so unique and so epic of how cool. And look at those eyes. They give him soulless white eyes. Like, you don't know what he's thinking. And he's just a ruthless killer. He's the most evil Godzilla. Um, Was, well, was the most evil Godzilla. He was the most evil Godzilla. Until we get into the next film. And coming in, well, maybe not the next film, but coming in at number five is Shin Godzilla. Yep, this movie I still love, still in my top five. But now thinking about it, I do love. I think. I love this film. I think the politics were great. It's a great way of how politics were handled, how the politicians were handled with Godzilla, with the with the triple threat of the tsunami and earthquake, how the politics handled the nuclear meltdown, the tsunami and the earthquake, how they handle it and not save lives. It just they didn't handle it very well. And it's the perfect movies criticizing the politicians and i do think shin Godzilla is a pretty unique design i do love all of shin's forms including kamata kun and shinagao kun and tail form and Godzilla and shin Godzilla. <sighs> excuse me and shin Godzilla is a pretty unique design i love the design easy pretty scary looking and yeah it's emotionless but i think that's kind of the point it's not supposed to give off an emotion 
it doesn't care who it kills. It's pretty much a zombie. Like, a zombie goes, it even looks like a zombie. And it's evolving like a virus. That's, yeah, I do love this version of Godzilla. Even though there aren't that many, there's no human characters to follow with. But the cast is pretty memorable, even though there's not a cast uh, main lead to follow. I do love the cast of this movie, even though they come off as idiotic, which is kind of the point. They're supposed to come off as idiotic, because that's how politics in Japan work. Like, there's a lot of idiotic decision-making, a lot of web tape around the politics in Japan. And I love it for that. And I love this film. Even though my mom does say this is her least favorite Godzilla film, which is kind of funny. I kind of like teasing her with that. It's like, oh, I love Shin Godzilla. I hate that film. I hate that film. I just love teasing her with this film. <laughs> yeah. But I do love this film. I think Shin Godzilla is probably the best Godzilla film out there. And then coming at number four is Godzilla. 1954. What? I didn't put this in the top three or top one? <gasps> Shame on me. Okay. Hear me out. Godzilla 1954. I do think this is good, and I do think it's the best Godzilla movie out there, but I don't think it's my favorite. Yes, it's a claim. It's the best Godzilla movie, but I don't think... It's my favorite Godzilla. Compared to these three down here, I do love these three a lot more than this one. And 1954 has a lot of dark moments, pretty dark moments, and I think this is easy the darkest Godzilla film with the moments. And I do love this film. I think it's the best. Nothing will ever top 1954 except for those three down there. But this is a perfect way to show what Japan was at nine years after the war, after the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, and the Castle Bravo testing, which killed innocent lives of the Yoki Day Dragon, which this movie was based off of. And Godzilla is the bomb. Legit is the bomb. He is he is soulless. He doesn't care who he kills. He's like a Jason Voorhees. No, maybe not Jason Voorhees, but I love this Godzilla. Probably one of my favorite Godzilla designs. I probably have to do a tier making tier list, making a little bit a tier list making all the Godzilla designs. But 1954, easily one of the best Godzilla films, but it's not my favorite. And I do think the puppet that they have for Godzilla is a bit cheesy, even though it works in a couple shots and other shots, it doesn't really work. It just looks cute and silly, which does bring the film down a little bit for me. So that's probably why it's at number four. But I do love this film. It does have a lot of dark moments in it, like the scene with the mother telling the children that they're about to die and the scene of the baby just crying, seeing her dead mother and Cesar's sacrifice and... Actually, a lot of these scenes are pretty memorable, and the cast is well casted. They all give the performance pretty well. And the city destruction scene is one of the best, and I just love that film. But compared to these three, at number three, The Lover's Destroyer. Yep, the best Heisei film for many reasons. For one factor, this is Easy the saddest because of the film. Like, this film is so sad and tragic. This is easy the saddest because of the film. And ends on a sober note. No one has a happy ending. This film is so sad and tragic. I think it's probably the best because of the film out there. Probably the best Heisei film out there. 10 out of 10 for me. I think it's the best in the Heisei era. It is a perfect way to end the franchise and deserves being the second highest grossing Godzilla film, in my opinion. And if this ended the Godzilla franchise, I would have been satisfied. If there was no Godzilla film after this, like 1998 didn't get their hands on the 
but Tresla didn't get their hands on the rights to Godzilla, I would have been perfectly satisfied. But that didn't last long. And I think this is a perfect Godzilla film to show to anybody. And I think it's the saddest Godzilla film. I cry every time when Godzilla dies or when, not even when Godzilla dies. When Godzilla is just looking at his dead son, trying to bring it back to life, and you just see tears coming on him. And he cries. Godzilla shows emotions for his son. And even the human scenes are pretty sad. Like, it's pretty interesting. I love this film. It's pretty interesting. I think it's a good film. And then we get to... Uh, it pains me to say this, but between these two films right here, Godzilla Minus One and Godzilla Final Wars, I... Godzilla Minus One is probably... I was mind blown. I was shocked of what I just witnessed when I first saw that movie. I was completely mind blown with that film, like I said in my review. But yeah, sorry, guys, the final wars. Forgive me. You're still my second favorite. You always have a nostalgic memory in my heart, but you are now number two. You are now number two. I'm sorry, guys, the final wars. Forgive me. Find it in yourself to forgive me. I'm sorry. I still love this film. I will always love this film, but this film is so insane and how crazy it is. It's the most insane, bad shit, crazy guys love film out there. I love it. I will always have a nostalgia play for this movie. It always held a dear place in my heart. But compared to Godzilla Minus One, this movie doesn't hold a candle to that. Like, this movie is so goddamn good. It's perfect in every way. It's nailed it. The characters are interesting. This easily has one of the best stories in any Godzilla movie. Has the best characters. I care for these characters. Like the doc, the kid, the captain, um, the main character, the main female lead, who... I just love these characters. They are so interesting, and I don't want them to die. But, man, I just... I don't want to spoil it for anybody, but please go check out Godzilla Minus One. It's easy, the best Godzilla film. One of the best. I love it. It's perfect. I care about these characters. They made me care about these characters, and they, this film is so good. I love it. It's perfect. I think it's my number one favorite Godzilla movie. Sorry, guys, I'm Final Wars. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. I think it's probably the best. Actually, maybe we move single point down here. <laughs> yeah, maybe just change it up. Yeah. It doesn't. Yeah, plus one. There we go. But, yeah, this is my ranking. I put single point in A. Because I don't think it, I don't think it's that good and to be an S, but yeah. So that's my making of my top thirty-seven Godzilla movies plus two. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of the Monarch Show. I'm not not the biggest fan of the Monarch Show. Yeah, I'm not enjoying it so far. I just find it frustrating. It has a lot of the same problems as 2014, but even worse. But with that said. That's my list for the top 20, 37 Godzilla films. I'll probably do another list when Godzilla X Kong comes out. I should have probably waited until that movie came out, but I'm impatient and want to do a tier list. So, is that already sign off? And remember, stay big, G fans. See you next one. Bye.